pigeons that are on here is phenomenal. It's a, stood in the, in, the, in the vehicle this morning just watching the volume of pigeons coming in. That that would be a kind of a, a, a year's amount of pigeons for me back home. So yeah, it, it's great to be out. It's really good. Fetch it here, fetch it here. Good girl, fetch it here. I think the pigeon shooting, you get everything. You get you get a kind of driven grouse target, you get a kind of partridge, you get a pheasant, you get a duck, you get a bit of everything. So it tests, and, and you'll see how much it tests me today as well. <laughs> <laughs> you will see. It was a 30, 30 year birthday present to myself. <laughs> Which, uh, uh, but no, it, it, it's, a, it's a great gun. I want functionality. I'm not too bad about looks. Same as me. <laughs> Um, I'm, come, come, come on. I'm, I'm I more, got my special filter on. <laughs> I'm more about practicality. I hope I'm practical, <laughs> rather than good looking. And I, ch I choose my guns the same. But I choose my wife differently. I'll, I'll, I'll get that on camera. All right, Let's stop right there. <laughs> We're shooting over some rapes double, uh, and just across from us is actually some standing crop, and behind us to the left as well. So that's the reason we're out here today. Uh, we, we always get questions from, from members and non members. I mean, can you shoot over stubble? Yes, you can. It's preventative measures. As per the general license, you can control pigeons on stubble and on standing. Uh, and on stubble, it's actually sometimes the easier, easier way to do it, but obviously you've got a lack of crop. Uh, but so as long as you're preventing local crops and trying to reduce the population, you're okay to do that. Cumbrian born and bred, I studied gamekeeper at Newton Reed College. I was a gamekeeper in Scotland for a few years. And then I got into uh, teaching down at Sparshot. Taught there for a few years, and then I was able to move up to Newton Rig, become the senior lecturer there, and, and it was it was great for me. It was almost going back home, back to Cumbria, but we had that that variance of resources. So we had the grouse moor, we had a deer forest, and it, it was fantastic. It kind of kept that direct link for me with gamekeeping, which is my kind of true passion. But it also fed that secondary passion of mine. Is actually passing that on, that infusing that passion and and those that kind of nuggets information, which is which is why. I kind of moved this position uh, and my audience is even greater now. So I'm not, whether as a previously, I might only be engaged with a few hundred students a year. Now I'm engaged with thousands of people each year. So, yeah, so okay. yeah, the more people I can have a yeah. positive impact on and pass that passion on to, the better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, the, the role of, of head of Pathways to Shooting was a completely new concept uh, within BSC. Um, completely new department, new role, everything. And, and I think it's, it was a sign that Basque had realised. Okay. okay, we've been preaching converted for quite a long while. Um, I think, as you and I all, we we know the benefits. We know what we do is great. We know the kind of that extra stuff that goes on. Uh, and I think they realise that there's lots of people that don't. It's that kind of middle chunk of society. It's those people aren't anti-shooting, but aren't pro-shooting. It's that massive majority in the middle, that middle ground, which. They may well be the ones that sign a petition and then maybe never think of it again. And it's those people we need to look at. So, so my role was established to look at those people on, uh, and look at opportunities to engage them. It's engaging them in a conversation, it's engaging Come them on. with a campaign. Um, so to give you some examples, like the Country File, that was a great, great um, decision to, to attend there by all the shooting organisations. We engaged with just front, like thousands, literally thousands of people that ordinarily had no idea what we were. We were kind of slightly obscure bunch of girls and boys in the corner of the Countryfowl Hall Arena that had dead things and we had meat and we had some reference to guns. And so people kind of came in a lot of the time quite intrigued. Uh, we had a little bit of kind of coming in, I mean, they almost had an agenda, but the bulk of people were just genuinely interested about what we did. And after that very quick conversation about we explained like this pigeon job, we're doing it for crop control crop protection, um, what is produced is a really kind of healthy, very sustainable meat sauce. Um, they, they didn't really have an issue with it, to be honest. They kind of came in, well, all oh, right, okay, and then walked off, at, more than likely chewing a bit of pigeon. And that was kind of one example of the, kind of a summary of my role that's engaged on people. Um, I also do lots of stuff with schools, both primary schools, secondary schools, universities, uh, scout groups, girl guides. So yeah, we, we, and we just get on and we say, look, th these kids are the next generation. And if we don't get right with them, then you nor I have got a job in the future. What's your dog's name? Uh, Jin. How old is she? Uh, so she's eight. So she's one of 
all my own lines. Uh, so I've got her sister, her mum and her mum, so her grandmother, uh, and they're all my own family. So it's a kind of line started by my grandfather. Uh, and we've got all the bitches, so we've kept that kind of line going, which is quite nice. So yeah, they're all, all my own dogs, own training. Which... How does she fare compared to the rest of the generation? Uh, she's actually very good. She's very, very clever. So being a keeper, I have a few dogs. We've got two Spaniels as well. So yeah, the Spaniels were kind of the grafting dog for the, the dogging in. And all my Labrador, so I used to have four labs on a shoot day. And I had them just because I knew exactly where they were. Uh, I didn't have to think, so I had, I had all the beating line to look after. And with a Spaniel, you just never quite know. Whereas my labs, they're just robots. And they're not mine, but labs in general, aren't they? It's that. It's that kind of old saying that labs are born half trained, spaniels die half trained, and terriers <laughs> will never be trained. Which is very true, because I've got a West Island Terrier, which one day will sit, and the next day it'll just stick two fingers up and go. It's very temperamental. So you started at Bath <laughs> over 12 months cool ago. Man, so what was it like for you? What were your sort of first impressions? Uh, and to be honest, I, I was blown away with how many staff were there and how much was being done which having worked with Bass for a number of years before, I think I took for granted that this, the kind of research, the data, all the stuff was just produced, but I didn't actually really stop and think who does it. And when I got showed around, there's a research department, there's a science department, there's a biodiversity, there's conservation, there's the media team. There's just there's this huge kind of set of cogs working in the background, which I admit, and hand on heart, I didn't fully appreciate. Until I, until I actually joined them and actually got took around and physically shook everybody's hand and said hello. And with my role, because it, it, when people say, what do you do, head of pathways to shooting, I don't think it means a lot to people outside shooting, which is slightly ironic because that's the crowd I'm dealing with. So, But it is a conversation starter. It's that first point. It's not the end of the conversation to start. And I then get to explain to them why I'm doing what I'm doing, a bit about my background, how it all, how it all links in. Um, but yeah, pathways, to shoot in science, research, they're just terms. But in, real, in the actual fact, there are physical people like me kind of grafted behind the scenes, creating this stuff and, and fighting the fight as it were. Th these pigeons uh, will be getting uh, plucked and dressed tonight. And I'm, I'm actually off uh, a little weekend break with some friends, so they'll be getting taken for the barbecue, some non-shooting friends, and I've all primed them. I'll get some pigeons, so I need to start shooting better. Um, <laughs> but we're gonna have some pigeon on the barbecue tonight and tomorrow over the weekend. So again, a bunch of friends that haven't tried pigeon before, not, not shooters, um, so they've got no reason to have tried it. So that's gonna be their first little sample. I'm gonna do some nice little uh, kind of pigeon fajitas with them. Uh, get the kids involved as well, get the whole family, because pigeon's fantastic.